Hey everybody, it's Shelby from Stang Books. So this is going to be my first book review. And I'm a little surprised because I always thought I'd start off my book reviews with something that I was super impassioned about, super in love with. So it's maybe a little weird to start off my book reviews this way, but I was reading this book this week and it turns out I had some pretty strong feelings about it. Just they weren't necessarily all positive. So I've thought, since I'm passionate about this book, it's still a good one to start off with. This week I was reading Evershade by Alexia Purdy. Now this book is about a young girl named Shade. She is a high school senior just trying to get through the last year of high school and graduate. She's just like every other normal teenager except that she hears voices. Now these voices will tell her to do things. So one day as she's walking home from school, the voices start in on her and tell her that she needs to go into this warehouse. And of course she knows if she ignores them, it's only going to get worse. Inside, she finds these two people going at each other with magical powers. Lightning and sonic booms and all around it's just chaos. And she's of course cowering in the corner hoping that they don't notice that she's there. Both of them are aware that she's there as a little mortal girl, but neither seems to care that much. At the end of the battle, though, the boy who'd been throwing around lightning comes over and introduces himself. His name's Jack, and he decides that because she hears these voices, he needs to take her back to his queen and introduce her to the oracle there because maybe they can give her some information about who she is and her past. So Shade decides to go with him to the fairy court. The fairies are at war right now. The Unseelie and the Seelie courts are in a battle to gain power and control a lot of the talismans that the fairies have. Jack brings Shade into the fairy court and introduces her to Iliariel, who is the oracle. So Iliariel takes one look at Shade and knows that she's destined for greatness. She lets Shade know that actually she's not human at all. She is a half-breed and that she has fairy blood. Shade is quickly introduced to Queen Zanara, the leader of the Seely Court, and Queen Zanara wants Shade to undertake a quest to save the Seely from the Unseely. There's a powerful artifact out there that they know that they will bring them great power and control in the battle if they have it within their possession. The waters of the Santaran Fountain can only be bottled by someone of half-blood. So they've all asked Shade to undertake this quest. Of course they put together a whole troop to go with her and support her on this journey and Shade is more than a little unsure and reluctant but she's gonna go along with it because they've convinced her she's the only one who can possibly accomplish this goal. Off they go into the realm of fairy to discover this fountain and bring back the waters. Alright, so how did I feel about this book? I love fairy stories I think the Fae are amazing and interesting, and this was actually a cool description of the fairy courts. Yes, it's the traditional Seelie and Unseelie, but they had some really interesting fairy types in this, like the Talene, who are completely lightning based, and if you touch their skin, it will pretty much disintegrate you. Of course, they all wear glamours to look more human and more normal, but Outside of their glamours, there's all sorts of crazy different types of fairies, different types of magic and powers that they can use. All of that was really cool. I actually really found the plot points of this story to be a good adventure story and um, quest-oriented goal. All of the major points were really interesting. They went along on a great path. And I, was in I enjoyed the actual task of where they were going and kind of what happened along it. My problem is this. I'm an actor, okay? And dialogue means so much to me. And I'm reading this book wanting to pull my hair out at the roots over the stilted, uncomfortable dialogue between these characters. We have a saying in film, show, don't tell. Movies tend to get, and I feel the same way about books, the more that you are just explaining something over and over or a character just comes out and says, hey, my name is so-and-so and I do this, 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 and this, instead of showing us through their actions, who they are, what they're about, we get really bored. And it becomes very preachy and very uncomfortable for us as the reader or the movie watcher to enjoy. This is very much a case of that style of writing. 
So while I enjoyed the characters as a whole, and I enjoyed the general plot points of this book, I couldn't get into the reading of it. And I would sit there and tell myself, okay, 20 more pages, you can take a break. Or 50 more pages, you can take a break. And it's not that long of a book. I think it's 296 pages. So the characters in Evershade are really great outlines of characters. And it's kind of the way I feel about the book as a whole. It's a really great outline or first draft of a novel. Everything feels very sketched in, and there's not a lot of depth to the characters, their decisions, why they do things. I liked Shade. She was a cute girl. She was really, you know, kind of out of her element, not really sure what she was doing, and she's trying to learn more about who she is and her past and why she never knew that she was a half-breed or any of this. And it has what I call the Lord of the Rings syndrome, where as long as Frodo walks along his path and drops the ring into the mountain, nothing else that anyone else is doing matters. And that's kind of the way it feels with Shade and her band. As long as Shade gets to the fountain and gets the water, nothing anyone else is doing really matters or helps. They actually are all kind of outlines of these characters that could be really interesting. You know, one's a healer, there's your half-giant who's got a lot of powers, you've got Soap who's a shape-changer, you know, kind of a little snarky with her. You've got Jack who's her first meet in the group and he's a little more distant but he's got a lot of power. So you've got this really interesting group of characters and it's wider even than that, but none of them felt fully fleshed out. They were just sketched in to hold this place in the group. And then, of course, you have Dylan, who is not originally part of their group and, due to circumstances in the story, ends up joining them later on. And he has a lot of antagonism towards Shade in the beginning. Problem is, we don't know why. It's never explained. And, of course, that adjusts as the story goes along, but it's not done in a way that makes it feel organic. It just is kind of like at these plot points I felt like, oh, now he's supposed to like her more. So a lot of the reasons and decisions behind why people do things or how they're really feeling never felt organic or stemmed from what was going on. It was just like I felt like, okay, this is the plot. This is the way they're supposed to feel at this point in the plot. And we're just going to take them there without actually guiding us as a reader to those points, which is the same problem I had with the plot as a whole. As individual points, I really enjoyed the plot of this. There were some really cool events. There were things, you know, actions that happened that were interesting and, and characters that jumped in to prevent them from going some places and traps that they fell into, all of which was really great. But they all felt like points on a line and the connection between them didn't smooth things along and didn't carry me with it. Last third, though, there was a lot less dialogue and a lot less talking, and we'd explained a lot of things, so things started to smooth out and become a lot more interesting and carried along. So the writing style actually improved over the course of the book. So the final third of the book, instead of being all ragey hating on and wanting to lash out in anger at my frustration, by the end of the last third, I was going, okay, maybe there's potential for this book to be better, and I'm now curious about book two. After looking on Goodreads, I did find out that the rating on book two is actually higher than the rating on book one. So it does lead me towards maybe potentially checking out the next book in this series, as there were some really interesting elements, and of course nothing is totally resolved, and I'm hoping that in later books they'll fill in more of the backstory of some of these other characters and flesh out the characters as a whole more. feels like a really great first draft that could have used a few more edits to fill out and flesh out more depth and more detail into the story. Overall, I'd probably give this a two and a half stars. It's one that I am curious to see where it goes, but I'm not going to be running out the door to get the next book in the series. I will look for it, it will get added to my TBR, but I'll probably be slow to pick it up. I want to know what happens next, but if the writing style in book two doesn't improve, it would definitely be the end of the series for me. I don't know if anybody out there has read this book, if your opinions differ from me, you liked it, you didn't like it, please just let me know, leave a message in the comments, tell me what you thought. Hey, I could be completely wrong, or if you've read the later books in the series and can tell me it gets better and I should stick with it, let me know down below. Thanks so much. Bye!